everything makes a video, does it, love? <laughs> ah, oh! But I can move those too. Oh, okay. Let's see. Watch out, heart racer. So I mentioned a couple days ago that we were meeting with a woman from the state who, who is uh, involved in a program or heads up a program that reintroduces beavers uh, into this area. Uh, it's been speculated that uh, at the turn of the, or at the, in the 18th century that there were 20 million beavers in this area. Oregon is known as the beaver state. That's how many beavers there were and they were basically almost trapped to extinction. So this is a program that's helping to introduce them. And it's so interesting when you start learning about, you know, we, we've done things a certain way in regards to water for so long. And now we're starting to realize when we're starting to have water problems that what we've done uh, as far as managing water is, has, has not been the best idea. Perfect examples right here where this bridge is crossing. Someone came in with a tractor years ago, dug a ditch and has a very defined stream. It looks nice, it kind of, it was kind of the, general way of thinking that's what you do is you if you have a wet marshy boggy area you dig a ditch through the middle of it and create a stream uh, so that you can free up this land and make it usable land for agriculture or grazing or farming or whatever what, what the problem with that though is that the land doesn't retain any water and the high areas are not no longer holding water and every time it rains hey ginger easy every time it rains everything just shoots down the ditch goes into the rivers uh, this massive torrent of water and then nothing up here retains the water so what we want to do and the reason why we're looking at possibly the, uh, having the beavers is to start creating natural dams in this area right here where we can let the water start overflowing its banks and start spreading out into the to the right and to the left of the streams rather than just have everything ditched and start bring, er, er, holding water and vegetate different vegetation will grow and that's why we're planting the cedars in here and the idea again is to hold the water on your property as long as possible and the best way to do that now we're finding out is is to have these wetland areas they just stay wet and they soak up tons of water they release it slowly rather than everything just washing downstream so that's something um, we won't be getting any beavers right away because we don't have uh, the right environment for them but we can create that environment um, by starting to dam this up dam just a series of dams every 30 40 maybe even 50 feet and with natural materials and and let that water start growing and, and seeping out and attracting the type of vegetation that's that's um, that's good for holding water and, and attracts all different types of animals and so more of that in the future we're just uh, we're just learning about it and kind of formulating a plan but uh, uh, something we're definitely going to do it is a tremendous blessing to have this sort of water, so much water on a piece of property like this. We're the, definitely the envy of our neighbors. Uh, it was one of the most important things when we were looking for our homestead was to have a good supply of water like this because you may know it or not, but water is becoming the next battleground. It's going to be become more important if it all isn't, isn't already uh, than oil uh, with the way that um, uh, droughts are happening and the way that the weather is changing whether it be man-made or or natural uh, I don't know uh, but we can't deny the fact that things are changing and the west coast is especially suffering from drought it's imperative uh, to be able to have access to water for your family for your crops for whatever you're growing and to be able to manage it so there's a lot to learn we have a lot to learn about this but uh, the th first thing we're going to do is, is start by capturing and containing and holding as much as we can for as long as we can. You know what I'm thinking? This area here where there we have an artesian spring that runs ooh, about 50 gallons a minute year round. Cold beautiful water is a kind of a you can see all these cattails and all of this vegetation that shows it's a real lot of water here. It's a real a low spot and if I was a beaver you know what I would do? is I would build a dam right there where it gets really narrow and back all this water back up here 
and triple the size of this, this wetland area. Flood all these cattails and all of that and then do a series of steps down there and, and flood this whole area. It's all flat down here and fill it full of cedars. Hmm. Maybe we should do that. What do you think? Should we put in a dam and see what happens and see how quickly, how long it takes the water to rise and, and flood this whole area? I'll bet it won't take long at all. Fortunately, I was victorious. Cody attempted to run me over a couple of times while backing up to the rock pile. <laughs> but I... You said, you said that we're, we're going to need counseling after that, working together backing up. Not, not, everything makes the, not everything makes a video, does it, love? <laughs> Those things are best forgotten. <laughs> so, it, it, well, we won't go into details. But anyways, um, so here we are and we are getting rocks. We have a, a rock pile in our pasture. And we're going to grab some racks and uh, try to slow some of the flow. We've got some little ditches. They're becoming ditches, but they're little creeks. And we do not want to have any more um, soil erosion. And so the, I guess it was the DNR or... The water lady. The water lady uh, recommended uh, putting something in to slow down the flow. So here we are using a hood of a vehicle which is a wonderful trailer if you don't have one, and um, a crowbar and a, a strong man. Highly recommend all three. <laughs> I promise I won't. So do you want me to wait to put bigger other ones on? Or can I just throw them on this side? Yeah, you can throw them. Uh, yeah, just don't, don't get. Don't get in your way. Don't hit me with one. The original way to all... What's that? Yeah, stone, a rock sled. But a cheap man's trailer, right? Or rock sled? Poor a cheap man's. Cheap man's or a poor man, perhaps, is the, is the better wording. Oh, that's a good one there. Hope that won't fall off. So hopefully we'll find some snakes too, huh? Snakes. <laughs> I mean, if I was a snake, this is where I'd be. How about you? Yeah, whatever I'm in. <coughs> Whenever I work in these rock piles, all the subscribers from Australia <laughs> are just going, yeah. They got the heebie yeah, like, There's no way I'd get around in a rock pile. <laughs> you insane? Like, well, we don't have any snakes here. Yes, we do. How many have you seen? Huh? How many have you seen? I haven't seen any. I've seen some snakes here. I'm talking about the poisonous variety. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not like Australia. Everything in Australia, Australia is, will kill you. <laughs> you got to be really tough to live there. <laughs> they, they, have the, they have the mean animals over there. Pandas won't kill you. Pandas? Yeah, but they're not there. They're oh, in China. They will. Do you mean koalas? Haven't you seen them break the bamboo? Oh, yo! I messed you up. <laughs> uh, more, or is this enough? That's enough. Okay. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just go slow and. It should pull straight behind and it'll run over the trees. Okay. We'll go down and then we'll get as close to the little bridge as possible. A Christmas bridge? Yeah, we want to we want to put them just upstream the Christmas bridge. So we have a nice little waterfall right in front of it. Okay, and do I need the crowbar to get it back? Maybe I'll just yeah. carry it over. Okay. So I'll walk behind you. Yeah, once we get through the trees, then you can jump in. As I was putting this video together this morning and going through emails and all of the opportunities and different things that are now presenting themselves because of the success of the videos and the success of the channels, I started to become overwhelmed. And I thought about that for a minute. And so I went back to God's word and said, what, can I find any advice here? Anything that can help me to make the right decisions here? And I came to this, everything boils down to just a couple things. The Bible tells us that we need to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. 
and anything out from apart from that is just not necessary. So it really gave me a tremendous peace and and I thought, you know what? Do you have enough? Yes, you have enough. Then just because you can do something or something could be more profitable or you can make more money doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best thing to do for your family or for your business. So that was a, a blessing to me and I wanted to share it with you and it gave me a real feeling of peace and contentment. So I have Manly Manners number three. Manly Manners number three. Don't dress carelessly when you're past your first youth. All the more reason to make yourself look as nice as possible to counteract the effects of advancing years. I think that that's very good advice. Easy to let ourselves go when we've been married for 10, 15, 20 years. But, you know, we have an obligation to look good for our wives and girlfriends. Our girlfriends have an obligation to, to look after themselves and to look nice for us. And I think that that's some great advice. So, would you like to watch part two? The Wrangler Star family actually does bridge building, or bridge building, dam building, and we have some good success. And we're going to do some more of that today. A little bit different type of uh, dam building, but I'll bring you along for that as well. But if you'd like to watch part two, you can click on the picture there, the video playing to the top left. Those of you who are watching on mobile, look for the icon on the top right. That'll link directly to part two. You can now use the annotation. So if you enjoy these videos, these daily vlog type of videos, um, I would invite you to uh, please a comment. Let me know if you'd like to see more of them. Or do you like big produced um, content rich type of videos? Um, yeah, it's fun to do both. Let me know in the comments if it's something that you enjoy. I'd be happy to bring you along more for these type of type as well. So don't forget to click the thumbs up and we'll see you guys over on part two. Mm -hmm.